Hello and welcome to today we're doing a question from LeetCode called search in a binary search tree. Now it's going to be fairly straightforward because this is a data structure meant for searching. And we're going to see that in a few minutes, but to go back to the question, what it's asking, you're given the root of a binary search tree and an integer val. Find the node in the BST that the node's value equals val and return the subtree rooted with that node. If such a node does not exist, return null or none. Example one, we have the following binary search tree, 42713, and we want to look for value two. We do find that over here, so we return that entire subtree rooted in two. And example two, we have the same tree, and we're looking for value five. Here it doesn't exist, so we return none. And we have some constraints over here. Now, the main point of this problem is just to know what a binary search tree is. So what is a BST? It's a very specific type of binary tree. Here, all the values to the left of any node will always be less than it, and all the values to the right of it will always be greater than it. So 1, 2, 4 here are less than 5, 7, 6, 10 are greater than 5. And no matter what node we're on, this is always going to hold true. Even with 7 over here, left is going to be less than 7, and right is going to be more than it. All the nodes follow that same pattern. And we've done validate binary search tree as a problem before, so if you are curious and want to just explore more of that, try that problem out as well. But for this, if we're looking for a specific value, we just have to compare how it relates to our root node. So say we're looking for 8. Over here, I compare 5 with 8. 8 is greater than 5, so I know now I need to look in my right subtree. So I go to 7, 8 is still greater than 7, so I go to my right again. Now 8 is less than 10, so I need to go to the left. There is nothing here, so we know that 8 can't exist. If it did, it would have been on this left path down here. So in this case, we would return none. So that's really all we need to do. We just need to compare against the node we're on and our own value that we're looking for. If we're less than the root node, we go to the left. If we're greater than it, we go to the right all the way through until either we find the value or we find nothing and just return that. So we're going to do this both recursively and iteratively just to see how both work. To close this up recursively, what do I want to do? Well, with the recursive function, there are always two things that we want to keep in mind. The first is the base case, when do we stop recursing? And the second is the recursive case, when do we keep calling our function? Well, let's say we want to do the recursive case first, right? We're comparing our value and our root value. So if our value is less than root.val, we want to call this function again with our left node. So say we're looking for value 4. We see our root's value is 5 and our value is less than root.val. So we're going to return solve.search bst with root.left and val. So again, if we're looking for four, we want to call the left child since we know it's going to be somewhere in the left subtree. Four is less than five. If that is not the case, so say we are looking for a value greater than our roots value. Say we're at root two and we're looking for four. Well, now we want to call this again with our right tree. So we're going to return solve.search bst with that roots right child and val. So we're looking for four and we were at this root node. We would now call this function again with our right node. So now what happens if our roots value equals the value that we're looking for? It's going to be one of our base cases. So if root.val equals the value we're looking for, we're just going to return that root. So if we were on 4 and we were looking for value 4, we just return this entire root. Now what if our node is none? We haven't found our value at all. So if our root is none, we just return none. And we saw that happening with 8, right? We went to 5, then 7, then 10. And if 8 should have existed, it would have been the left child of 10. But that is none. So if we do run into none, we just want to return none. And it's important we make this check before this, because if we did have a none node and we were checking this before returning none, we'd be calling a value on something that is none and we would run into issues. So now that we've written all of this up, let's go ahead and submit this. And it is accepted. I'll run through our code line by line to see exactly what's going to happen. I'm using example one, but modifying it. So we're using value one instead. So we saw 42713. We're just looking for one instead of two. So going through this, the first check we do is to make sure root is not none. It's not none, so we don't return. And root.value is not equal to our value. So we check. Is a value less than root.val? That is true. So we go into this if. And we call search.bst with the left child of four. So that's going to be two. And the value we're looking for is still the same, that is one. So we're back in this function going through this again, root is not none, the value does not equal our value. And again, the value we're looking for is less than the root's value. So now we pass in the left child of our current root, which was two, so that left child is gonna be one, and the value we're looking for is still one. Going back in this function, root is not none, root.val though does equal our value, so we return that root. We're just gonna return one entirely, and that is going to be our answer. 
So we just did this recursively. Now let's quickly also do this iteratively. Okay, to do this iteratively, it's going to be very similar logic. Say we're back with this example, 5271461610, and we wanna do this iteratively. So what we're gonna do is set our current node to be this root node over here. Now while our current node is not none, so while current is still there, and current.val is not equal to the value we're looking for, we want to keep searching. We want to see which half of the tree to look in. So for that, we need to make a check and we know how to do that, right? We compare our value that we're looking for to our current roots value. So if val is less than cur.val, then we know we want to look in the left half. So we're going to set current to be our current.left. So if we were looking for one, we see one is less than five. So now our current node is going to be our current left node. We're going to look in the left half. If that's not the case, so else we look in the right. So current equals current dot right. Now, when do we stop searching? Either if current is none. So if we were looking for eight, right? Eight is greater than five. Our new current node is this right node. Again, eight is greater than seven. Our new current node is 10. Eight is less than 10. So our new current is going to be current dot left. And we see that it is none. If that's the case, our current node is now none and we just need to return current. And if that's not the case, if the current dot val equals our value, if we were looking for seven, we see seven is greater than five, we go in here. But since the value of our current node equals this value, we don't go in this while condition and we just return our current node, which has the same value as the one we were looking for. So that is it for the iterative solution. Let's go ahead and submit this and it is accepted. Now talking about time and space complexity for both solutions, for both of them, since we are looking for nodes and we don't know if our tree is balanced or not, we could potentially have all nodes on just one side. There's going to be O of N for time for both iterative and recursive solutions. But for space, our recursive call stack could be as big as the number of nodes we have. So that's going to be O of N. But for the iterative solution, since we just have a while loop, it's going to be constant O of 1. Now before leaving, let's also do a super quick walkthrough of this solution as well. Say we have this tree over here and the value we're looking for is 4. So going through this line by line, we set our current to be our root. So current is going to be 5. Now while current, that is true, and current.val is not equal to val, that is also true. We go in this while loop. Val is less than current.val. So now we set current to be current.left. So now current is going to be two. We go back in this while loop and current is not none and its value is also not equal to four. So we're back in it. Now value is not less than current dot value. So we go in this else and we set current to be current dot right. So current is now four. So we're back in this while loop while current, this is true, it's not none. And current dot val not equal to val. Now this is not true anymore. These two values are equal. So we don't go in this while loop and we just return current which is our root node correctly pointing to four. So we just return node four. So we just solved search in a binary search tree two ways, both recursively and iteratively. If you have questions with either one, of course, let me know down below. I will answer all of them. If this video was helpful, like, comment, and subscribe. It really supports the channel. And as always, I will see you in the next one.